hope if they don't, I'm in big trouble. Here's the heavy activity down the... I, I got something special for you tonight. You ready? Science! Science? Ah, thank you! Little delayed action there. We have a close-up view of, of Tropical Storm Bob. Bob's peak winds are 40 to 50 miles an hour, gusting to 55. Bob is moving the center, you see, here's Lake o Okeechobee. The center is moving east at about 10 miles an hour, but the heaviest precip definitely is to the south. Now, as far as the radar, it is awesome. It is humongous. But here's the lake. The real heavy stuff is to the south, the yellow area. That's the severe activity, the heaviest amounts of rain down near the Miami area. Now, we have a rainfall chart for you tonight. Beach in West Palm Beach in Florida. Here's the way it looks on the picture, just about to move off uh, shore at Palm Beach. This is some of the uh, shower activity surrounding the center of Tropical Storm Bob, which is roughly about here, destined to move on out into the Atlantic in just the uh, next several. It was in here this morning. Now, there it is at 6 a.m. Remember the rain this morning? Through the day today, you see that big batch moved offshore. But look at the circulation. It's going to run one more time now. If you use your imagination, you can see things circulating down just about right there. That's just about the Stewart area just north of West Palm Beach on the coast. So that's where we think the center of uh, rotation is right now and moving just offshore at this time. Who will be celebrating his 80th birthday in the near future, Frank? Well, the satellite picture, there's the center and you see the heavy rain east of it. Now let's go to the sequence starting at one o'clock this morning. And this is the thing to watch. It's clear up here. And now here we have a little tiny storm off the Florida coast. And look at this, it just barrels northward during the day today. And you see that big circulation set up there. And as that circulation really gets going, that's a sign the storm is intensifying. You can see it happen right there just this evening. So it was, I don't know, hundreds of miles away. And it really hit them just tonight. So it's, a, it's just a good lesson for everybody. Remember the storm started Monday afternoon, a little weak thing off of Fort Myers. Then slowly moved into the coast, gathered a little bit of strength. 50 mile an hour winds there uh, Tuesday morning, yesterday morning. And then moved across the state weakened some with the friction of the peninsula and then just zoomed up the coast today and built strength as it went out over the Gulf Stream waters. Tonight we're here with a 75 mile an hour hurricane. Associated with the weather system, there is an awful lot of it. So far, uh, the bulk of the heavy rain and the bulk of the high winds have been offshore here, but as we can also see, there's an awful lot of rain activity and as we just uh, spoke just a moment ago to Nick uh, Gregory, riding out the storm. The fast-moving storm was upgraded to hurricane status for only 12 hours, but it drenched the South Carolina coast with 6 to 10 inches of rain as it moved through early this morning. Fear of the quickly developing storm sent several... ...came ashore in South Carolina. It kicked up some waves, damaged a few boats, and briefly knocked out power to 30,000 people. Overall, there was little damage. Before the, your very eyes, a tropical storm in formation. Eight o'clock yesterday, the tropical depression south of the Isle of Pines. You can see during the afternoon some showers and thunderstorms as actually a band of moisture from the system moved over Florida. And then as the nighttime progressed, the uh, diurnal activity, the thunderstorm convective activity, died off over Florida, but the storm continued. Slowly but surely, it made its way out of the Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico. It still is just a tropical depression, but right about there, it becomes tropical storm Danny as we head into the nighttime hour. Now, again, the convective activity diminishing over Florida, and the 10 o'clock photograph shows... It is becoming a little bit better organized as time goes on. ...thunderstorms on into southeastern Texas, and the eye is quite well defined here as we look just to the southwest of Lake Charles, Louisiana. It is not very far away, as a matter of fact, the eye from making landfall here at the Louisiana coast. And certainly, a hurricane warnings up for this area. Look at all the rain showers across uh, the southern portion of Louisiana. Moderate here. stretching all along the Louisiana coast into Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We'll have a close-up view of that in just a Continuing to make its course off to the north-northwest about 10 to 15 miles per hour. And it's becoming more organized now, too, strengthening slowly as it makes its approach to the coast. And if it had a lot more water to work with, this would become a very, very strong hurricane. At this point, it continues to intensify, but it's running out of room. You can see on the latest radar, here's the eye of the storm getting a little bit closer now to the coastline, right around uh, intercoastal city. Uh, it's not all that far. You can see some of the feeder bands, very heavy rain bands circulating around this in a counterclockwise fashion, as is typical with hurricanes and tropical lows. You can see it just circulating around. Very heavy rainfall reports have been found here to the south. Uh, upwards of 5 to 10 inches certainly possible as this system continues to move in that north-northwesterly fashion. Flash flood watches are widespread. Also, with hurricanes as they move onshore... Uh, the north end of the eye is 
making its way right along the coastline, right around Pecan Island in southern Louisiana. Some of the oil rigs offshore have already reported hurricane force winds. New Orleans, Louisiana, picking up a couple of inches of rain already. The north, northwest. This is um, Lake Charles found here, Lafayette over here, Cameron here, and you can see Pecan Island right about here, Vermilion Bay, as that system continues moving on north. Wind sustained at 85 miles an hour, containing lots and lots of rain, 5 to 10 inches of rain, certainly possible, and there certainly could be some very heavy flooding taking place with this. Far, you're going to have calm winds, but as soon as the backside of this hurricane gets there, the winds are going to shift to west, the opposite direction, just about from what they were and be very, very strong. So when you get this calm, you've only had half of the hurricane. You've still got to go through the other half that's uh, coming up here as this whole system moves towards the uh, north, northeast. Very as this uh, hurricane continues to move up mostly toward the north. Tides are going to still be pretty high, especially out in this quadrant in the east where we have very strong onshore winds through Vermilion Bay. Now let's put it in motion and you can see what's happened over the last several hours and you can see that earlier when it first started, most of the eye was still offshore, gradually. The tidal surge poured into the low-lying areas of the coast. Water gushed ahead of the hurricane force wind, filling up low-lying areas to the limit. Police were forced to block some roads leading to the coast because of flooding. The wind blast tore roofs off some homes. House trailers were easy targets. Their owners were warned to leave early before the storm hit. In the town of Kaplan, the full force of the storm hit around 9 o'clock this morning. Electric power was one of the first victims. Scores of businesses throughout the area suffered damage. Civil defense officials monitored the track of Danny, keeping tabs on trouble spots throughout the area. Clouds, its winds whipping up the Gulf of Mexico, battering oil rigs. These pictures taken from a special government reconnaissance aircraft. Danny slammed into the southwestern Louisiana coast with 90 mile an hour winds and torrential rains. When the brunt of the storm hit, only a handful of people were left in the low-lying coastal communities. Some that did stay were trapped by the high water that has flooded many roads. Those with power watched the storm's progress on television. Weather officials say the eye of the hurricane appeared to pause briefly off the coast, then follow virtually the same path as Hurricane Audrey, which took nearly 400 lives in 1957. But Danny is not nearly as strong, and with the evacuation of more than 30,000 death and damage will be relatively low. It didn't strengthen quite as much as we anticipated, and we're very thankful for that. As the storm moved inland, the winds picked up some roofs from buildings, like the one on this giant marina. This one section broke, well, they just took the rest of it with it and just peeled it back. You hate to see the shares go, but uh, nobody got hurt, so you just have to repair them and get back in business. For Coast Guardsmen, today's business was rescue. The storm, but as Mark Potter reports, it did cause considerable problems. The storm came ashore at mid-morning. It hit hardest the central and western Louisiana coast. Strong winds of gales to hurricane force will move inland. Louisiana's many Cajun residents heard their hurricane warnings in Creole. Governor Edwin Edwards declared much of the coast a disaster area. Some residential neighborhoods and roads were flooded. Roadblocks kept motorists away. Just can't let you pass. The water's coming over the road. The power lines down. Power was knocked out all around southern Louisiana. The biggest problems were caused by tree limbs falling on electrical wires. Throughout the evening and the early morning hours, residents here in the low-lying areas evacuated to higher ground. They were mostly afraid of flooding. In the rescue shelters... After moving back and forth in the Gulf last night, Hurricane Danny finally took aim at Cameron, Louisiana. The storm was generating winds of 85 to 90 miles an hour, but it lost its punch as it moved on shore at 10 o'clock this morning. All along the Louisiana coastline, people had heeded the warnings and left their homes for safe shelters. I was scared. We're not leaving from here until they say it's safe to go home. In Cypermort Point, more than 60 people have taken refuge on a bridge after a storm surge raised water levels more than a foot in five minutes and flooded their homes. I heard my dad and him talk about Hurricane Audrey, which had nine feet of water right here where you were parked at just a few minutes ago. And uh, since then, we've never seen this much water come over the highway. Hurricane Audrey slammed into Cameron in 1957. 525 people died. <laughs> There have been no reports of deaths or injuries from Danny, and only minor damage in the 13 Louisiana parishes where a state of emergency was declared by the governor. That tree, it is down on the 
telephone line. Look at the fence. Strong winds buffeted coastal communities all day, and forecasters are still saying as much as 10 inches of rain could fall. But there has been no serious flooding reported, except to the east of the eye of the storm near New Orleans. That's the dirty side of a hurricane. Where the